How to play finger style or finger picking guitar. Lesson 27. For anyone who's just discovered this channel or this lesson, it is part of a complete course. But don't panic if you've missed the other lessons because I've put them in order into a playlist. And the link to that playlist is down below in the description. So you can go through the complete course if you want to. And for this particular lesson, you'd probably need the tab. And if you do, you can view it on screen at www.ebooksforguitar.com. And if you'd like the ebook with all the tab in it, completely free of charge, so you can download it to your own device and print it out when you need it. I'll be uploading a video next week telling you how to get it completely free. So if you want to see when I upload that video, please like, subscribe and hit the bell icon and then you'll be notified when I upload that video. Right, let's get on with the lesson. Lesson 27. Finger style patterns using just two fingers. Now, you're probably thinking we've taken a step backwards and this lesson will be really easy. However, trust me, it won't. And even though most of the time you'll only be using two fingers, the primary and the index finger, or the primary and the middle finger, some of the tunes and exercises can actually be very hard. This style of playing the guitar can really be used in any genre of music from classical and neoclassical to early delta blues, right the way up to modern contemporary and rock music. And even if you're not keen on this way of playing the guitar, it's really useful as a stepping stone to develop thumb speed and accuracy for styles like Travis picking, and thumbstrum. Right, let's get started with the lesson. Exercise 1. This first exercise is to help you build up the accuracy of your primary finger or your thumb. So we'll just be using a very simple E minor chord. And for the first half of the exercise, you'll alternate between the primary and the middle finger. And then for the second half of the exercise, you'll alternate between the primary and the index finger. Here it is being played at 90 beats per minute. Notice that there's two notes per beat or in other words, all the notes are in quavers. And I'll play it with a two bar introduction. Here that is again at the same speed. Try and play along with it if you think you can. And as usual, there's a two bar introduction. For anyone with more confidence, here it is one last time 
but this time at 110 beats per minute. Now, don't worry if you can't play this yet. You could just practice it a little and return to the video later. Or you can move straight on to the second exercise anyway. Exercise two, a basic blues sequence. Now, this is harder than exercise one because it's got far more string changes and note changes in it. However, it's not as hard as it looks because there's a lot of repeating patterns in it. Looking at the score, you'll notice there's chord names above some of the bars. And these are the chords that would accompany that bar or line. And where these repeat, the pattern repeats. So, for example, line 1, 2 and 4 are identical. And the last line as a good portion of the pattern, you're playing line 1, 2 and 4. And looking at line 3, you'll notice it's the same pattern as line 1, 2 and 4, but it's been moved up a string. Again, if you look at the score, you'll notice that the only line that has any major differences is where we play the B pattern in line 5. Right, to start with, I'll play through line one, just so you get a good idea how the pattern sounds. Now, there's two ways of playing the background chord. The first way would be to use the first and second finger, in which case you'd use the fourth finger for playing the individual notes. Or you can use your first finger across both strings and then you use the third finger to play the individual notes. Which method you use is down to your own personal preference. As I've already mentioned, that pattern repeats throughout the tune. And line two is just a repeat of line one. So here's line one and two being played at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. Now here's what line three sounds like, which is exactly the same pattern, but upper string. Hopefully you've noticed that sometimes in the score, the last note of the pattern is missing. And this is to give you time to change to the next pattern. Here's line three again at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. Try and play along with it if you think you can. Right, let's bring those first four lines together at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. It'd probably be a good idea to pause the video at this point and just practice those first four lines a couple of times. But here they are again anyway, 
at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. The fifth line is completely different to the other lines you've played in that you're using the open B string to provide the support note whilst playing the walking bass line with the primary finger again or the thumb. Here it is being played at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. And here that is again, with the usual two bar introduction at 90 beats per minute. Try and play along with it if you think you're ready. Most of the last line we've already done in parts throughout the rest of the tune. So here's what the last line sounds like with a two bar introduction. And here that is again, with a two bar introduction at 90 beats per minute, in case you want to try playing along with it. Now, before we bring the whole tune together, let's just hear the last two lines being brought together first, so you can get an idea of what they sound like. Here's those last two lines again in case you need to hear it, or in case you want to play along with it. As usual, it'll have a two bar introduction. Right, let's bring the whole tune together at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. Try and play along with it if you think you're ready to. Don't worry if you can't play along with it yet, or if you can't play with the metronome. You can just practice it as it is until you get the hang of it. But for those of you who are ready, here it is again at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. And finally, for those of you who are really confident, here it is at 110 beats per minute with a two bar introduction.
Something I should point out before we move on to the next exercise is that the whole exercise is in repeats. And you can repeat it as many times as you want because you can use this and adapt it to your own blues song. However, I've ignored the repeats for the sake of this video so it doesn't go on too long. Right, let's move on to the final exercise. Exercise 3 A variation of a section of To Carter and Fugue, which was originally in D minor by Bach. This exercise is quite tricky, but the experience you gained from the previous two exercises should help a lot with learning to play it. And when you can play it up to speed, it sounds pretty impressive. To learn this, it's better to break it down into three sections. The first six lines, then the next four lines, and then the final four lines. So we'll start by looking at the first six lines, which has a one, two repeat in it. To remind you how we play this, we play from the beginning of the tune, ignoring the repeat facing inwards, and then we go through to the line marked one, hit that repeat and return to the top repeat. Then we play through again, but this time we don't play the line marked one, we go on to the line marked two. And at the end of this line, there's no further repeats, so we then go on through the rest of the tune. To give you a good idea how this first section should sound, I'll play through it now, very slowly, including the repeats. If you recognise this tune, you'll know that eventually we want to play it quickly. However, we'll start off playing it slowly so you can build up the speed with practice. Something to watch for with this tune, if you're playing along with me or with a metronome, is the fact that it doesn't start on the first beat of the bar. It starts on the last beat of the bar. So when we do a counting, it won't be a full two bars but rather one bar and three beats. So listen out for that. And I'll address the difficulties before we start this tutorial, and then you'll be able to think about them and address them as you're learning to play the tune. And the first difficulty is the fact that the whole melody is played on one string. So you have to move positions quite quickly. The second difficulty is the fact that you play an open note between each fingered note and you're playing the open string next to the string you're playing and this means you can easily catch your fingers on the side of the string muting the note so you have to make sure you're keeping your thumb well around the guitar so that your fingers go on tiptoes and this way you can avoid muting the open string to learn this first section I'm going to break these first six lines into two lots of three lines. And that's because they're quite different. The first three lines are going up the guitar. And the second three lines are coming back down the guitar. To look at the first three lines then, you'll notice first of all that the first two notes are on their own before the repeat. And this is because 
if you take a look at the last two notes on the fifth line, these two notes are in effect the repeat of the very first two notes. So when you do the repeat, you obviously repeat to the beginning of the second line. This particular variation is a contemporary version, and therefore I'll be teaching it you using the contemporary method. However, this could also be played using the classical method. So I'll explain both methods, and then if you do decide to go the classical way, you can. But I'll just be doing this for the first three lines of the tune, where we go up the guitar. Playing this section, the classical method, hinges round where you play the two open strings on the second, third and fourth bar, because this is where you change the position. And the position is where you place the first finger on the neck. And when you see properly written score, this is shown as a Roman numeral above the score line, like this. So, if you were playing this tune the classical method, you'd be playing the second bar in the fifth fret position, the third bar in the seventh fret position, the fourth bar in the eighth fret position, and the fifth bar in the tenth fret position. And from these positions, if you've seen any of my videos on learning how to play the scales, you'll know that the finger should go a finger a fret, except for the little finger, the fourth finger, which covers two frets. We will look at this in more detail later on in the course, when we'll cover this tune again, but a completely different variation, which is far closer to the original, and it's played in a classical method. To play this section using the contemporary method, we use the first finger straight after the two open strings, but then we change position straight away. So you move the first finger, and this would be what's called a silent slide. Whereas with a vocal slide, you'd actually be able to hear the slide. So looking at the first five bars, starting with the second bar, you'd play the fifth fret with the first finger, and then the seventh fret with the first finger. In the third bar, you'd play the seventh fret with the first finger, and then the eighth fret. In the fourth bar, you'd play the eighth fret with the first finger, as well as the tenth fret with the first finger. And finally, in the fifth bar, you'd play the tenth fret with the first finger, and then the twelfth fret with the first finger. Now, this particular exercise is in at this point in the course because of the finger picking pattern it uses. However, it's also a very good exercise for building up the cleanness and the speed of your position changes. Here's the first five bars being played at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. I'd imagine for most people, you'd need to go away and practice this before trying to play along with it. But here it is again anyway, at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. Right. Let's take a look at lines four and five, including the last two notes of line three, and then we can bring the whole of the first section together. And in case you're wondering why I'm ignoring line six, this is because it's identical to line five, except for the last two notes. So once you've learned line five, you already know line six. From the last two notes in bar five, right the way through to bar eight, you're literally walking down the guitar with your fingers. So every time you play the first finger in this section, you've moved down a position. You're literally using two fingers in a walking motion 
the first and second finger or the first and third finger. Here's that section being played at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction so you can see how it's done. If you've got your guitar in your hand, it's a good idea to practice that for a minute till at least you've got the concept and then we can draw it together with the first part so we complete the first section of the tune. But here's that end bit being played again at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. And here that is again one last time in case you want to try and play along with it. Here's that whole first section being brought together at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction and I'll play it with the repeat. As I said earlier, this will probably take a little bit of practice before you can try and play along with me. But if you think you're ready, here it is again at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. And I'll play it with the repeat. You'll remember at the beginning of exercise three that we broke it down into three sections. However, for the moment, we'll look at section two and three as one section. And this is because really it could have been done as another one, two repeat. However, I didn't want to put two, one, two repeats in a song at this stage in the course because it can be quite confusing to navigate. But if you take a look at the first five bars of section two and then compare those with the first five bars of section three, you'll see that they're both identical. So once you've learnt the first five bars of the second section, obviously you'll know the first five bars of the third section. It'll only be the last three bars of each section that's different. Now, in the first section, we were using an open string as the drone note, which we kept repeating. However, in this section, it's going to be the fingered note on the B string. Therefore, you want to keep this in place as long as you can until you have to change it. Here's section two being played through. Notice how I hold the note on the B string in place for as long as I can.
This section and section three both start on the first beat of the bar. So watch out for that. Here it is again at 90 beats per minute with the two bar introduction. So you can see how it's played again. Or you can try and play along with it if you think you can. And here's section three, which you'll remember is identical except for the last three bars. And here that is again. Right, let's bring section two and section three together in context. So I'll play section two and then go straight through section three. Let's hear that one last time at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction and then we'll bring the whole exercise together. I'd imagine it'll take most people a little bit of time and practice before they could play this all the way through. However, if you want to hear what it sounds like, or you do want to try and play along with it, here it is at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction.
And here that is again. Finally, I'll play that one last time at 110 beats per minute with a two bar introduction, and this is closer to the correct speed. At the end of this video, I've put some metronome beats at 90 beats per minute, 100 beats per minute, and 110 beats per minute, in case you want to practice with them. So, I'll sign out now. To recap what I said at the beginning of this video, this is part of a full guitar course that you can find either on my YouTube channel or at www.ebooksforguitar.com and there you can view the tablature online for free. And if you want to see my new guitar lessons, please like, subscribe and hit the bell icon, and then you'll be notified when I upload them. Thank you very much for watching, and hopefully you'll come back soon.